SpaceX may have found a way to return to flight with Falcon 9, to start flying Falcon 9 again much quicker than expected. And most of the space industry is waiting to see if they can succeed with this. Space Flight Now is reporting today that SpaceX submitted a request to the FAA to do a public safety determination on its Falcon 9 rockets, independent of its investigation of the Falcon 9 mishap last week. This was a surprise to me because to my knowledge, no one has ever made this request before. Usually the proper sequence of things is that there's an investigation done on the mishap to determine what the problem was, then a re remediation fixing that problem, and then a launch license with a public safety determination. So that's usually the sequence. And SpaceX is wanting to skip that sequence. They're wanting to do that in parallel rather than sequentially. If SpaceX is able to succeed with this request, that could mean the FAA could determine that the Falcon 9 poses no safety threat to the uninvolved public on the ground and therefore could return Falcon 9 to launch as quickly as days from now. I'm Lara Forsick. I'm the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical. We look at this kind of thing. I did a video a few days ago, which I will link above, where I talked about the fact that the last time SpaceX had any kind of Falcon 9 mishap like this, it resulted in a six month delay. That was back nine years ago. I knew this Falcon 9 second stage mishap on July 11th was probably not going to delay things six months. In fact, I said less than three months. I was interviewed by a journalist today where I said probably within weeks that they'll figure this out. It's really not a big deal from a public safety perspective. The Falcon 9 was already well into its launch by the time the mishap occurred. And what they want to do is determine whether or not there is any kind of public safety problem with the liquid oxygen leak that caused that ice, that caused that engine to explode when it was reignited. My perspective is that there is no public safety concern Concern, but they still want to understand what went wrong with the rocket. The FAA did issue a statement today saying the FAA is responsible for and committed to protecting the public during commercial spaceflight transportation launch and re-entry operations. On July 15th, SpaceX requested that the FAA make a public safety determination as part of the ongoing investigation of the Starlink Group 9-3 anomaly. The FAA is reviewing the request and will be guided by data and safety at every step of the process. There's more to this statement. I will link it below. Low. So we don't really know what the FAA is going to come back and say. They might come back and say, no, we need to, we need you to do the full investigation in order for us to feel comfortable. They might come back you know, and say yes, but it might not be as quickly as we all hope. On that video I did recently, I did talk about the domino effect of this launch delay of grounding the Falcon 9. So if you're curious, I've had several reporters ask me recently about what the downstream effects of this are. And so it's not so much a problem with the Starlink constellation. This is just 20 Starlinks out of 6,000. It's much more of a problem with all the manifested launches that are currently you know, their, their dates, their launch dates are currently in flux. They, they currently do not know when all of these customers that are going to be able to launch on Falcon 9, which is so reliable that it's become just taken for granted that we're going to launch uh, Falcon 9 every few days. And if it is that the SpaceX Falcon 9 is grounded for weeks to months, then there will be significant downstream effects. But if it's only grounded for days couple of weeks, it really won't be quite as bad. It will still have effects. I mean, we've already seen Polaris Dawn get delayed. That's probably going to affect NASA's Crew-9 mission. It's probably going to affect other things in the pipeline as well, but it won't be as bad. So I wanted to go through the process of understanding how long the FAA conducts its investigations for spaceflight anomalies, especially recent ones. Back nine years ago, the last time Falcon 9 had a kind of explosion like this, it took approximately six months from the time of the launch anomaly on June 28th, 2015, until the reissuing of a license, which I could not find the exact date that the license was reissued. It must have been same day or the day before the launch, the next launch, which was December 21st, 2015. And most of the news was not about the fact that FAA had reissued a, you know, the launch license. Most of it had to do with the fact that December 21st, 2015 was the first booster landing, the first return of a first stage booster to a landing pad, which was a very exciting day. Can't go off on too much of a tangent, but I was there in person. It was a very meaningful day to me to witness that. But that was approximately six months to go from launch anomaly to the FAA approving their launch license. I wanted to understand, I mean, that was nine years ago. I wanted to understand what other more recent anomalies have resulted in, what kind of delays. So here I looked into not the difference between when the anomaly occurred to when the next launch occurred, but the difference between when the anomaly occurred and when the FAA issued the next launch license. And I looked at partial and full 
failures. And I, I didn't do all of them. I didn't look at, for example, the recent pin issue from Virgin Galactic. Like, I didn't look at every single one, but I was very curious to see the evolution of how long these delays take place, how long these vehicles are grounded for until the FAA gives approval. Sticking with SpaceX here, do you remember that they had an explosion on the launch pad? So that wasn't a launch anomaly. It was a refueling anomaly. Do you remember that? That was September 1st of 2017. It took them approximately four months for the FAA to reissue a launch license after that incident. I just mentioned Virgin Galactic. Now they're a different story because it's suborbital and there's always people on board. There's always pilots. It's it's a bit of a different story. It's, it's not a complete comparison, but I did want to mention that there was a fatality back October 31st of 2014. A pilot for Virgin Galactic died during an anomaly. They did a full investigation. They determined that that was pilot failure. And because that vehicle was destroyed, they did not get another launch license until they had the next version of the vehicle built and ready to fly, which took them approximately 21 months, just a little under two years. And then Virgin Galactic had another minor, minor anomaly. It wasn't anything serious. I, I debated whether to even include it, but they deviated from their restricted airspace path. So it wasn't a problem with the vehicle. It was more like a problem with their piloting or their software. That was that hugely hyped up launch uh, with Richard Branson back July 11th, 2021, and it took them 2.5 months to get their launch license. Rocket Lab gives us the most data here in terms of launch failures and launch licenses. So just going through this here, May 25th, 2017, there was a failure that resulted in a approximately six months between the anomaly and the launch license. July 4th of 2020, that one was pretty quick. That was only four weeks of grounding. May 15th, of 2021, that one was a 2.5 week. So that was super quick turnaround. That was not even three weeks. And then September 19th of 2023, five weeks was how long it took. So you can see really quickly how much the process has been sped up in the most recent years. In the past four years or so, the process has not taken long at all with these Rocket Lab launches getting their launch license after an anomaly. Here's where I deviate from my data a little bit because I could not get information about when Firefly got its launch licenses. So all I have to go on from Firefly launches is their date of anomaly and their date of return to flight, which is not the same comparison, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. So September 3rd, 2021, it took from 13 18 months to get to return to flight. October 1st, 2022, 11 and a half months, almost a year, return to flight. December 22nd, 2023, that was six and a half months, so almost half a year. The gaps are getting smaller here. Then we go to Relativity Space. They had one anomaly, Terran 1. Last year on March 23rd, I was unable to determine their launch license situation, probably because they're not launching Terran 1 anymore. They're now currently building Terran R to launch approximately 2026, so they don't have launch license for that yet. So I, I can't give you that information. So you can see here that even though when I referenced the last anomaly that SpaceX had that was like this nine years ago, and I said that there was a six month gap, well, I don't expect there to be a six month gap again, not for any launch anomaly like this, simply because the FAA has gotten a lot quicker. They have more people, they have more resources, they're more streamlined, and they're more used to commercial launches. Commercial launches used to be a whole lot rarer than they are now. I do want to give you some numbers. I'm going to link to a graph below, which isn't completely up to date. But in this graph, you can see that nine years ago, 2015, there were 14 total FAA licensed and permitted launches and re-entry operations. And this is fiscal year, not full year. Um, 17 the next year, 22 the next year. So we're seeing like really low double digits in terms of numbers of launches and re-entries for an entire fiscal year. By 2018, it's 35, 2019, 32, 2020, 33. So still, you know, pretty low in numbers, but a little bit higher. 2021 is when things get a little bit more exciting. We had 64 in 2021, 74 in 2022. The graph ends there. But according to the FAA, there were 124 FAA licensed commercial space operations in 2023. That's triple the number of total operations in 2020, they note, and they're expecting by 2026 to double that figure. So you can see how the, the pure number of commercial launches that the FAA is 
giving licenses to is increasing significantly. And there was a period of time in there a few years back when the FAA was saying that the space industry is growing so much that they can't keep up because they don't have the staff, they don't have the budget, they don't have the resources. And so for a few years, they were really vocally, loudly complaining to Congress to give them a larger budget because they could not keep up. The speed at which these things can go can sometimes depend on simply the numbers of people that they have to work on these investigations. And of course, the investigations are done by the commercial space flight providers themselves, but it's in coordination with the FAA. The FAA is the the one who grants those licenses. So eventually Congress did actually give them an increased budget, which allowed them to bring on more people. I think they still are understaffed, but right now we are, we are seeing that they are increasing the speed with which they can give these licenses, the speed in which they can do these investigations. You might notice I didn't even include Starship investigations in here because that's not an operational vehicle. Um, but but those Starship investigations, those are pretty quick turnarounds now. And if SpaceX has determined a way that they can return to flight with Falcon 9 very quickly in the next few days, the next couple of weeks, that is going to make a huge impact on the downstream effects on their customers, their private customers, their NASA customer, and their own Starlink launches. It really makes a big difference to the entire space industry when they can get back to fly. There's just so much that rides, literally rides, on a Falcon 9 that we as a collective don't want this to be delayed too much, regardless of what you think about SpaceX. It really makes a difference how quickly they can return to flight safely. And if SpaceX is successful in asking the FAA to do a public safety determination before the investigation is completed, you can bet that they're going to make that request again when appropriate. And if SpaceX is successful in finding this new way to get to return to flight quickly, you better bet their competitors are going to be using this trick as well when appropriate.